What's going on, creators? Yeah, I just want to get on here and uh, bring everybody back to now. <laughs> Appreciate y'all being here and vibing with me for a bit. Yeah, today I got a couple things on the uh, agenda to uh, talk about, and one of which is just the, the repeating pattern of mental diets and how important it is to spend your attention, your energy, you know, where you're focusing a lot of... Uh, what you're consuming uh, media wise on on things that are actually uh, beneficial to your growth and not just you know feeling like um, some victim where you're constantly just reacting and reacting to narratives instead you know start creating narratives you know these this new creation that you are is not the whim of whatever whatever whatever's going on on the mainstream cable news networks or what's what's trending on Twitter you know so many times you know, I see you know through my media consumption it's just like oh you know talk Talking points, these talking points, and and all of them are based on this this narrative that continues to play out, even though that that narrative has no bearing on my physical reality. <laughs> you know, so it starts to become more and more of like um, almost like a distraction, and really kind of start to unplug more and more so from screens and um, from other people's narratives, and really focus on you know what's going on in my own life, what what can I improve on, what can I um, kind of focus my attention on that is a benefit to not only myself but my family, people that I'm around, and and all that kind of stuff. You know, how can I be a, a more um, maybe caring person? Uh, you know, looking within and you know seeing these things that just aren't working that well, and and working on elevating those and and evolving those, and not to sit there and shame and guilt uh, myself at like oh this is where I'm at I'm just like a like a piece of shit <laughs> you know but like uh, just like looking at it critically not really critically but just like from a far back perspective where it's just like yeah I can I can see that I'm doing these things and I can do better you know and and that has to do with kind of like the flow of this conversation I want to get into and that has to do with letting go of attachments which can be kind of triggering because like um, a lot of times, you know, for me, when I hear letting go of attachments and, um, you know, it's, it feels like, um, like I'm going to be worse off for doing that. <laughs> you know, it's like, it always feels like, oh, what I, what I have everything. I'm just going to hold on to it and I don't want anything to change ever. And I just want to just recreate the same groundhog day over and over again. But, you know, when it comes to like letting go of attachments and, um, kind of, embracing change is realizing that so much of these things are, are changing the way we're telling ourselves um, stories uh, about particular events you know so it's like a good example of that is maybe like your body and you know there's all sorts of stories you can tell yourself about your body or like oh I'm I'm beautiful or oh I'm I'm not I'm not very attractive or oh I'm um, I'm very fit I'm very you know, these are all stories that we start telling you know I'm, I'm very in shape um, these are all part of our identity that we built around these different narratives. And a lot of times um, when those start to change, a lot of times we can start to violently try to hold on to these things instead of realizing that a lot of the change starts to spin positive you know if we if we start telling ourselves a better story, one that evolves and elevates our consciousness and also is a is just a new way of looking at things and you don't got to worry about how to do that by ultimately asking uh, God to help show you, you know, get these new thoughts, you know, God will plant those seeds and they'll start to, to, to grow into to new narratives when you ask, you know, but part of like the old nature is to, to never ask and to think that we know everything and that we know what's good for us and what makes us happy. And, um, you know, what, what stories we like to tell ourselves, even if they can be very negative and self-destructing stories, you know, it's like, um, you know, I, I realize that, you know, when people, like, call you a name or talk shit or, you know, do any of these types of things that can be, like, um, mm, trouble, I don't know, it's, it's just like, why would you say that? You know, so many times, you know, it has to do with um, our identity that we've made around the name, you know, so it's like someone calls you, like, maybe like a racial slur or just, like, talk shit about your body in some way, and it's like, oh, I'm really offended by that. It's like, well, it's not actually you that's offended. It's just, for one, it's, it's the old nature. It's the personality. It's like the, uh, the the ego, you know, on some level, which, you know, I don't want to even strengthen that because ultimately the ego is not even real. Um, but for a season, it, it appears, it's an illusion, you know, and so it's like illusions appear real, but when you actually go into them, 
it really has no substance, you know, but like a lot of it has to do with the identity that we've created, our old identity, you know, so if you like, you know, maybe get called a name or someone talks shit about your, your physical appearance or your hair or your, you know, it's like, oh, maybe you have like your, your teeth look weird, you know, all of these things that we can be self-conscious, you know, part of like that self-consciousness, you know, where what's like a negative is like we're telling ourselves a negative story about it, which a lot of times then starts to project outwardly into our situations with others because in a lot of ways our life situations uh relationships jobs you know all the all these like check marks of the world you know power um social status all these types of things a lot of it is all based around the inner narratives the inner conversations that become externalized and so to start changing those outer situations you first got to start changing your inner conversations because they will continue to mirror that inner conversation. So, um, you know, if you're self-conscious about certain things, you know, one one area that that starts to come up is when someone then um, say you're self-conscious about maybe the way you look or your hair or something like that, and just just real, you know, whatever. And then someone says something about it. Well, a lot of times they echo those inner conversations. And a lot of times in the old nature, when we're just in reactivity mode, or um, our fears become more uh, unconsciously manifesting and and not taking ownership because the fundamental error of the old mind is that um, our thoughts have no bearing on anything. You know, we were just a brain and a body that even our thoughts have, they come and they go and they don't mean anything. But, you know, they, they actually have a lot of meaning, you know, once you realize how everything's connected, you know, and that's part of like growing into the new uh, creation that you are is, is seeing that connectivity firsthand, you know, how, how your thoughts, your beliefs and your assumptions start to be mirrored in your, your life situation. Then you, and you start to notice that as you become more and more still, as you become more and more present into the, like the, uh, the present moment awareness, because it's only ever now. And so a lot of times, you know, you could get like maybe a, I don't know, an argument with your spouse or something. And maybe, or maybe they just said something just stupidly, like they're just being stupid and they just said something just like very triggering and they didn't even realize that they did it. And then the next thing, you know, you have a choice. Am I going to, you know, throw a fit about this or am I going to um, kind of nip this, you know, am I going to have a confrontation about this or, am I, or, you know, but in the meantime, you get this story that you start telling yourself, they could be gone, you know, and then you're still telling yourself this mental story. And a lot of why you're so offended and upset is because somehow what they said made you, um, it has to do with your identity. It's like you, you, you've made a story around this thing. And, um, you know, part of why you're so upset is because you believe this untrue narrative about yourself. You know, it, it's weird how it starts to play out. And it, every time it happens, it's, it's somewhat different because, Everything is in a constant state of change. Everything is always changing. The only thing that doesn't change is when you become still and you, and you become the observer of the thoughts, of the emotions. And when you get into that, I am aware that I'm a, I'm conscious of being. I, I that's about all I know. It's like I know that, that even if I close my eyes and I kind of, or if I'm in a dark room where you can't see any anything, you can't tell where your body stops and starts. If you're in one of those kind of environments you still know that you exist, you know? And so that, that kind of, um, you know, space to be in, that doesn't, that doesn't really change, you know, but everything else, um, changes. And, and with that, the stories that you're telling yourself, um, those start to change, but ultimately it's changing from an old identity of separation into a new identity of being connected uh, with, with your environment, with your situations, with God, with, um, heavenly things with your, your, you know, the metaphysical um, law, you know, all these types of things. It, it starts to become more and more obvious through personal experience as you're doing it. But you know, tr resisting um, change, you know, has to come. You know, really start to ask, so why am I resisting change so much? A lot of times we resist changes because we think it's going to be worse than it was before, even if it, like the current situation isn't that great, <laughs> you know? So it's like, it, like with what's going on in the world, you see a lot of people having uncertainty when it comes to uh, jobs and their careers and what's going on, what's happening in the world. And what, what's, what's, what, what are these, you know, it's hard to define. And 
and, and people are in this weird space where they don't want to let go of the, like this old thing, this old illusion, you know, because they there's the fear that it's going to be worse than it was before, even though what was before was miserable. <laughs> you know, and, and so like when it comes to starting to embrace change, it has to do with telling your new a new story to um a new story about what change even is. You know, if if you're looking at things as as running as as an up down paradigm, which, which you know has to do with like you, your vibration, your frequency, how much fear that you have in your consciousness versus, um, and a lot of like the fear has to do with how many illusions, how many lies that you kind of have made part of your identity. Not to say that you know you're you're less than because of that, but as you let go of the fear and grow your faith and embrace the new you, the new you in Christ, you know it's like you you naturally rise in consciousness, and it's like as you're rising in consciousness, you know you can you start, um, you know at some points you know things that that you thought were important you let those go, some of the things that you didn't think were important you start to realize those are important things, and um, you know as even every now moment is never exactly the same. Even 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 right now, as I'm speaking, yeah, you know, I have my window open. There's there's blowing air coming in. It's like yeah, it's similar to you know yesterday on some level, but it, but the clouds are subtly different. I mean, everything is subtly different every single day. And the more you become more observant of that, the more you can kind of appreciate how everything is always different. It's like a snowflake is a good example of that. It's like you can see thousands and hundreds of thousands of snowflakes in a pile of snow and, and not one of them is identical. Even identical twins have subtle differences. You know, it's like everything is subtly different. You know, and the more that you um, kind of realize that change is part of life, you can start telling yourself a better story about the change, the changing environment. Because a lot of times the story we're telling ourselves now is, like, oh, if I if this if this changes, then then it's going to be worse, and I'm going to be this, and I'm going to resist the change, even though everything's always in a state of change, you know. And it all has to do with the story you're telling yourself about it, you know, and and the attachment to the old, even if it's if, even if it sucks, which is weird. And it's like this Stockholm syndrome where you like fall in love with your abuser, and you know it's like leaving them or or whatever. You see, well, if I if I let this person go, even though they chronically abuse me, I don't want to embrace a new change. You know, it, it's it, it's these stories you're telling yourself about this of letting go of the attachments of the of the uh, of the situation that can start to uh, manifest more and more. And so, um, yeah, when you catch, it, but you start to catch, you, you have to catch the story in yourself that you're telling yourself. You know, what would happen, and that has to do with like changes for the better you know a lot of times when you realize that you know god's in control you can be do and have anything and you're already been blessed um everything that you already want is the reality right now god's already created it all you have to do is walk into it you know take that you know take that that action take that step into faith but a lot of times we push that away and and uh, well, we can tell ourselves stories about why we do that like oh you know last I don't want to feel that vulnerable because I don't want to be hurt again or I don't want uh, you know so say um, there's so many there's so many ways that we push joy away you know even in this present moment right now because that's all that's real so it's like you don't have to look far uh, for 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 what I'm talking about because it's like what's affecting you right now that's keeping you from fully being totally happy well, more than likely it's a fear. Maybe you feel attacked. Maybe I feel like, you know, it's like, oh, Mike's attacking me. Why is Mike attacking me? And it's like, I'm not attacking you. <laughs> it's like, you know, part, part of, um, you know, part of uh, your identity feels like threatened because, you know, it's, it's changing. <laughs> it's like, it, it's hard to describe, you know, because we're talking about like concepts that are in thought and in emotions and stuff and so it's like you know part of part of why you feel attacked is because you know part of you feels threatened the part that doesn't want to change even though everything's constantly changing and evolving and growing and and expanding um yeah it has to do with the story you're telling yourself and and if you make the connection that the story you're telling yourself is somehow tied to an identity that's not real it's not actually who you are 
you're, you're actually breathing life into a more than likely a state of being that you don't even prefer to be in. You know, because we're all expressing states of consciousness, you know, and um, there, there's really only two states of consciousness. Though. There's there's fear and then there's love, but it's like music. There's only, you know, seven notes in a key, but you, you there's like endless variety. You know, it's, it, it's, it's weird, you know, how something so it's like binary code, you know, it's like with computer codes, like zeros and ones. How can zeros and ones make this technology you're watching me in right now? And it's, it's crazy when you really stop and think about it, but like, um. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that to you guys' attention, you know, especially um, for people that are just holding on to the old, you know, which which you're seeing in society. I see that in society with like, well, you know, if I just take my fifth experimental booster, then then I'll get my old life back. Just holding on to holding on to uh, the old, the old state, not embracing the new, you know, just you know, because it's like, well, anything new is going to be worse. It was, it was like, well, look at it, what it was, you know, before. It was just walking around consciously, reacting, reacting, reacting like a, like an automaton, not not creating anything, just constantly. Oh well, what it, what what what's on um what's on Fox News today? Oh, we we have some some new tragedy. Oh, some new injustice. Oh no, some new arbitrary. Whatever, you know, it's like, oh well, let's see what's on CNN. Oh more, you know, more, more injustice, more division, more separation, more illusions and, and all that. And I don't have to say like those are even bad. And you know, I sit there and judge, um, those mediums of expression, but not to, not to believe that it's, that it has any bearing on what's going on in you, you know, because ultimately God's in control, you know, and, and God, um, has a, is, is, you know, really taking yourself out of things is very helpful you know, because it's easy to feel like you can do something wrong when you think that you have control on things. <laughs> you know, it's like, but once once you realize that God's will is playing out perfectly in your life, everything is going perfectly. The part, the people that are meant to hear this will hear it. Um, there's nothing I can really do about it. You know, everything, um, everything is unfolding exactly the way it should be. You know, not to sit there and judge creation. Um, and start to embrace and, and and love things, you know, instead of just sitting there and it's like, well, I wish this was different. And this, you know, I would, you know, you know, putting putting your own story behind things and just allowing things to to be what they are. And then, if anything is going to change, you know, ask God to help you change the the story you're telling yourself about it. You know, that that's, that's a very helpful um, way to go about things and and letting go of those kind of old attachments. Um, these old things that we, uh, um, yeah, we have told ourselves over and over and over and over again. It's just like, just because you've told yourself that many, many times doesn't make it any more, uh, any more than, because, because you can look at others that have been telling themselves like stories over and over and over again and see what it has brought them. And that's a little easier to do if you're like married or in like a, like a, kind of like a serious relationship because then uh especially when you have kids because then you're then you start to really see like wow that person was brought up totally different than me um and their values are different and you start to see how a lot of their limiting beliefs and it's like why why do you why do you believe that that doesn't even i don't believe that at all so it's like um and i have like the proof of my own life experience to back that up versus somebody else you know who, who's like I see it very commonly with like people that were really like raised by authoritarian style parents where it's like, oh, well, there's, these are the rules. You need to follow the rules. You need to do that versus a kind of the way I was brought up. is more of like, you know, the opposite of that where it's just like, yeah, I go do whatever, you know? And like, um, and so when I see like the contrast, it's like, well, yeah, just because you had that experience doesn't mean that that's the only way you can see it, you know? And so it makes it easier to, um, you really start to, to see how everybody's stories are just subtly different and not to get hung up on your own stories and your dramas and, and look, yeah, your parents did the best they could, but they're just people too, you know, and more likely they were unconscious. Yeah. You know, unless they're like highly enlightened beings, like, um, when they had you, I know, I know like my own, you know, experience of raising kids and I could have done way better, you know, did, did the best I could, you know, but like, um, and we're always, everybody's doing the best they can. Even if you look around, everybody's doing the best they can. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of that's not, not the, not the pinnacle, you know, where, where it could be. 
but I, I feel like that's all moving in a direction anyway of like growth and uh yeah, like heaven on earth is like the, the destination. As more and more people get on board with that idea, you know, instead of like, um, let's just create hell on earth all the time, which has to do, to do with like, oh, nothing really needs to change in physical reality to experience heaven on earth besides the mindset that the people are, are experiencing. And ultimately that starts with you. You know, and so if, if you aren't being the change, then, then nothing's ever going to change. So it's like you got to do it. And that might be hard to hear uh, because we get so uh, stuck in these victim narratives and wanting to be saved. Jesus has already done it. You know, just so it's like you've already been saved. You know, Jesus is within you now. You know, it's like the connection to God, the Holy Spirit is within, the teacher is within you. Um, all of these things are within. You can look into the Bible for yourself to verify that, and I encourage you to do that because um, the more that you uh, depend on the Holy Spirit to be your, your guide, your teacher, um, the better off you'll be. And so, um, yeah, I definitely want to encourage you to do that. Other than that, I think I'm going to kind of wrap this up for today. I got to, uh, I don't know, I got to take care of the chickens a little bit. They've been laying a bunch of eggs, which has been awesome. Been giving, giving eggs away, just as gifts to people. Um, yeah, cause it's just the amount, you know, it's, it's crazy watching, you know, watching things come together, you know, when they, when the whole chicken getting chicken, I think we have nine chickens, two, two ducks and a turkey, you know, and so it's like, you know, I don't got my phone. I can show you guys a picture of the coop, but it's on the charger. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, so that all just came together. You know, me and my wife, neither one of us had any experience with chickens or farming or any of that kind of stuff. And so the thing I found to getting anything done is just start taking steps. You know, what can you do right now? Anything. You know, say, like, oh, you can put some screws into the, uh, into the post to shirt up a little bit better, make it a little stronger and just start, okay, I can do that. And as you're doing that, then, then the next thing unfolds, then the next thing. And, and, and it's no different from any other thing in life. You just, it's, everything's unfolding right now. It's like, what's keeping you from experiencing joy right now? You know, that's, that's the resistance. That's the, that's the thing to, that's the attachment. That's the thing to let go of. That's the story you're telling yourself. Well, ask God to help you change that story. You know, it, you know, it might take, hours of clock time but you know it's still only ever now it's like as soon as you realize you can tell yourself a new story is the start of telling yourself a new story you know it's the problem and the solution come in the same thought as wild as that sounds you know but like um yeah it does though you know it's like the more that you start to get that space and step into that that uh that you observer kind of observing the thought not being um connected with it as part of your identity feeling the emotion, not really, you know, connecting the emotion with part of your identity either. You know, it's like, it's something that's just happening. So something that comes and goes, something that's part of always changing it. You know, if feel those like negative feelings, those that negative energy realize, Hey, this is going to change. Nothing is permanent. It's, it's going to come and it's going to go. And, and a lot of times, you know, you can ride these things out and it can kind of feel uh, I don't know, say freeing is, you know, but lighter, like a lighter energy, you know, when, when you realize that, you know, nothing's permanent, everything is always changing because you are always changing and everything's a reflection of who you believe yourself to be, your assumptions, your, your, your feelings about everything. It's always being mirrored back to you, you know, so you don't change the outside by, by physically moving shit around. It's like you change your inner story that you're telling yourself about your identity, by all these things inwardly first god will then reflect that outwardly and then you know reward that faith that, that that's how things are going you know, it's like you know I, in the past you know dealing with like pain and shit in my body you know I, i'd have like so many stories you know of like um labels you know oh it's a diagnosis so then that comes that spell <laughs> you know comes with all of these like all this Bo, uh, you know, bullshit and just like all oh, these stories. Oh, there were 50, 50 percent chance, or they don't even know why this happened and this. And, you, and it's like you can just as easily start telling yourself, uh, you know, that's I'm being strengthened. It's like I'm I'm not dying. I'm being strengthened. You know, I'm not being weakened. I'm being strengthened. You're just telling yourself a new story. So I'm gonna encourage you guys to start t telling yourself a new story. Spend more time, you know, in um maybe spiritual information the bible uh even you know if, if you spend 
I don't know, three hours a day, you know, staring into screens and, and listening to what's going on in the world and how you're a victim and how things are always just going to shit, you know, and exposing yourself to that kind of mental diet, you know, start, start to realize that your mental diet is very important. Um, and what you, what you put your attention uh, onto, you are breathing life into it. And so it's like, even what you're speaking, you know, it's like, would you speak that knowing that that speaks it into your reality that you will experience that, you know, it's like, don't, don't start saying things that, uh, you don't want to happen. You know, it's, it's, it's that it's a change in mindset. It's a change in, you know, how you're thinking about things, how you're speaking about things, you know, cause a lot of times your speech, um, outwardly, uh, reflects your inner conversations anyway, you know, but like, um, yeah, your, your 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 words are powerful, and so um, and 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 words of others are powerful too. You know, so it's like, are are you want to spend spend your time listening to shit that just um that that creates more barriers, more obstacles, more more shit to kind of unpack all things. You know, you know, you know, God is in all things. You know, there, there's only oneness. There's only one thing you can believe in, like the uh, opposing force, the they, but you but you've built that that's that's something you have built up it doesn't mean it reflects reality and then it's like the more that you have built it up the more of an illusion it becomes the more you strengthen that illusion you know ultimately ask god to help you um let go of those illusions but like um realize that you can start and, and so much of it has to do with your mental diet and what you've been uh, consuming you know if you have three hours where you're consuming say you say you watch you know, a three hour long podcast every day or the news, or, you know, whatever you're watching, you know, whatever, whatever's you know, entering your subconscious mind, you know, take that time to dramatically change. You know, it's like, you know, listen to maybe an audio book instead that has to do with, um, you know, how you can feel better. You know, it was like, I, I like listening to like the impersonal life. I just got done listening to that Joseph Benner. I've been kind of on a Joseph Benner, um, binge, you know, just, um, you know, the Bible talks about like, uh, the true, that the true bread of, uh, of heaven. You know, I, I feel like that is just a uh, truth. Um, you know, listening to truth, you know, feeds your soul. You know, and so, um, if you're spending a lot of time and energy, not listening to truth, uh, you know, try shif- shifting what you're, you're listening to incorporate more truth. Um, you know, and that's between you and God, you know, what, 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 how God leads you, you know, what books, what um, information, but just ask to be led. You know, realize that you're already being led. You know, it's you're exactly where you need to be right now. And so, um, yeah, take you take yourself out of the equation. It's like God's already done it. You just, you know, sitting back and and and, and watch how how God's doing things um, is important. But like, um, yeah, other than that, I think I'm about. So you know, thanks everybody for listening. Um, and have a good rest of your, uh, oh yeah, you know, thanks for liking, sharing, subscribing. I appreciate you guys doing that. Um, just sharing videos with your friends and all that. And then, um, I appreciate your spiritual and financial support. You know, thank you for that. And, um, yeah, till the next now, I think I might be playing my guitar a little bit today. I just put new strings on it. Um, I can't remember. I thought I had the box. I don't know where I do it. Is the, oh, maybe these guys. You know, I, I really like these strings, uh, these elixirs. Um, I've liked them for a long time. You know, the uh, the sound of them uh, is really nice as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe uh, someday to figure out how to, uh, you know, get a, you, know, you call it an affiliate link to them. <laughs> you know, because if you play guitar, it is important. You know, and that's one of the things I've always kind of been shitty at is, like, changing strings and, like, I got another set of strings. I didn't even put these on. I haven't even given these guys a try. There's, like, a music shop in my town. They kind of half asses out out there. You know, they ended up shutting down, mostly because every time you go there, they're, they're like, had overclosed oh, at, you know, 2 o'clock on a, on a Thursday. It's like, really? You're, you're closed during the week, you know, on a Thursday? You weren't closed last Thursday. You know, but then, um, yeah, I, I go in, I, t- I tell the guy, I'm like, give me, give me your best strings. Yeah, I don't care how much they cost. And he didn't hear me for some reason. And he gave me these guys, which he he, he thought they were the best cheap strings. They I think they were only like a couple bucks. I don't know. And so I haven't put them on, mainly because it's like, dude, I can afford like $20 strings. I mean, that's like, I, I want to support your business. You know, so it's like... Um, I don't want to buy. And the funny thing was, I, I he didn't have change, 
and he and he like took a loss on him because he didn't have change. It's like it's like, dude, I would have happily paid twenty bucks. It's like, but he wanted to sell me them for some reason, and I just haven't put them on. And so uh, maybe maybe in the future I put those on. And and not to talk shit about this company, uh, I have no idea about your strings. And so uh, we'll we'll find out. But that was just my experience at the guitar shop. Uh, with the guy that was working in there, I don't think he, I think he was just like an employee. I don't think he actually owned it, but like, um, I don't know who actually owned it. You know, I, it, it, was, it was kind of a weird situation. But like, um, yeah, other than that, I think I'm about. So you know, thanks for everybody for listening, and have a good rest of your um, now, and God bless.